try.chaseforme.com helps you send out to-dos on Slack. Uh, they've got 100 companies signed up so far, sending to-do lists again out to their audience. He's measuring retention over the past 16 weeks, coming in at 43%, using some of his favorite tools like Segment and Mixed Panel. The question is now, can they grow that user base from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to more? Funding the company with $100,000 pre-seed round at a $7 million cap last year, then did a $20,000 round this year at a slightly higher cap to buy some extra runway for full-time today. Two co-founders. We'll see what they do next. Hey, folks. My guest today is Josh Martau. Before founding Chaser, he got an MBA from Berkeley and was employee number one at Thriver Technologies, which did a Series B, 165 employees, and broke $60 million in revenue. He built the and led the sales, product engineering, growth, and digital marketing uh, and business intelligence practices at the organization, holding three different director roles throughout his tenure. That led him to identify the need for a tool like Chaser at try.chaseforme.com forward slash Slack. Josh, you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. All right. Well, I guess first thing, it sounds like you're on a rocket ship at Thriver. Uh, how many years were you there? Uh, five years. Okay. So your one year cliff for your vest was completed, huh? Yeah. And the, uh, the bonus uh, top up round that came a year later. Why? I mean, if, if you were killing it, which it sounds like you were, why didn't they try and keep you with an additional option grant? Um, the issue was that our revenue tanked 97% when COVID hit. We were a catering a corporate catering company kind of like uber eats for getting food oh. to the office and as you can imagine not a lot of people go into the office uh, after covid was hitting certainly not eating all together our slogan was gather around but at that point you might as well change it to stay away that's so funny or or zoom around or something um exactly. okay so so what is chaser maybe tell, tell us what you guys do through the eyes of how a customer is using you today totally yeah so Projects management software is widely broken right now. And that's because most teams don't care enough to adapt their workflow around it. You know, you don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to go look up what I have on Asana today. And then at night, go and mark everything you did that day. And then the next morning, do it over and over again with whatever project management tool your team's using. And, you know, there's 172 million people working in desk jobs who have to use project management software. A lot of them have to use it. Um, but two or three are not satisfied with their tooling. And so we're trying to solve that problem. Um, Chaser is the only project management software that only one user needs to use. And the way it works is you can delegate tasks to anybody on Chaser, um, even if they're not a user. They don't need to know what Chaser is, uh, frankly. Um, Chaser will send them the task through Slack or email, and they'll be able to see, like, okay, I've been assigned this thing. I can click here to mark it complete. I can click here to push back the deadline. And Chaser will collect progress updates from them, send them reminders until it's complete. And you'll be able to at all times track on your Chaser dashboard where the progress, where the status of this uh, task is. And you can rest easy knowing Chaser is going to follow up with them to make sure that it happens. You don't have to uh, handle that burden anymore. And you never had to onboard them because, again, they don't have to be a Chaser user for this to work with them. And are you still testing the MVP or do you have paying customers already today? We have a working MVP. It's on Slack. Um, that, uh, that link you mentioned before, try.chaseforme.com dot com forward slash slack is where you can get the mvp 100 percent for free um we are we're not charging people today but we have a whole bunch of companies uh, we've had 100 companies uh start using us um and a ton of them have been using us for many months now and keep coming back and they're telling us it's uh changing the way they work um, um beta users can lie to you and tell you anything you want to hear how do you actually look at the performance metrics how they're actually using your app the click flow through your app what, what is the traction metric you're focused on every day yeah, we use Mixpanel to track our customer behavior. Um, love that product. Anybody is looking for a behavior tracking tool. Um, and the main thing we're looking at is retention. I mean, you know, not reinventing the wheel here. Um, and what I can tell you is that after 16 weeks of using our MVP, we still have 43% retention. Um, and again, this is, this is an MVP. Uh, it has been bare bones. We've now actually just yesterday released a major update. Josh, how do you define um, to, though an active user? Because that's how you get to retention, right? Does that does retained mean they sent at least one task per day or per week, or they just logged in? I mean, what does that actually mean? Sent one task per week. Yeah, no, great question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so over the past of of a hundred percent of the companies that signed up for the past sixteen weeks, last week forty three percent of them, so about forty three of them, sent at least one new task out. Yes. Yeah. I, well, it. We're only the 43% is of the ones who've been with us for 16 weeks. Not all of the hundred who have oh, used it have been with us for 16 weeks. So there's a little bit of caveating to that, but that's the gist of what I'm saying. 
Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay, yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube, all these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million, seed round, 3.7 raise, they sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only wanna see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. How do you know that the, the task being sent out is the dopamine hit that's gonna get someone excited to pay for Chaser? In my head, my gut reaction, you know more than me though, would be the dopamine is actually when the task come back is completed. It's a really, it's a really good point. Uh, we are starting to implement tracking for making sure the tasks are actually being followed through, but we're taking a bit of a shortcut and we're saying, look, if people are sending tasks and after 16 weeks, they're still sending tasks, they're getting value from it. Mm -hmm. um, it's doing what they needed to do. Um, we're going to dive deeper into that to further make sure where the problems are happening, et cetera, um, because you bring up a good point, but you're not going to keep coming back and keep sending tasks through this if it's not actually helping you at all. Do you, do you know how many tasks got sent out over the past 30 days? Um, off the top, this, it's a bit of a vanity metric that we don't track too much. Um, so, but it, it's in the hundreds. Hundreds, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how many came back complete? You know, 100 or 50 or... I, I, I'm embarrassed to say that's just not something we have dove into too much. Yeah, we've, yeah. Been, we've been focused on... On I'm attention. curious, you know, I use HubSpot. I send out tasks all the time to my sales team that I never hear back mm. from. I still keep sending the tasks out though, even though I, what I really want though is for the thing to be done. And that's like the hit, you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, no, that's the, that's the tricky thing. And, you know, HubSpot can help um, because you have those uh, salespeople on it and they're all users who actively engage with it. Sounds like they might need to engage more, but I mean, that's a tale as old as time. Salespeople not, uh, you know, using their CRM properly. Yep. Um, but where we come in is when you don't have the salespeople, you don't have your operations people, you don't have your product, your engineers, et cetera, all on the same platform. What Chaser comes in is it can send and delegate tasks to anybody, whether or not they're engaged with any platform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, just to be clear, you're, you're not in any way affiliated with, with usechaser.com, right? No. Okay, Chaser, different, different, is. okay, different company. Yeah. I just, I was curious. Uh, just, I, I want to make sure folk, my audience doesn't get messed up. So if you want to try you, they go to try.chaseforme.com forward slash Slack. Yep. How are you getting customers today? Um, we are getting through two avenues. We're approved on the Slack app directory. So that's actually maybe even an easier way to find us is just go on the Slack app directory and search for Chaser um, rather than that kind of mouthful URL that I'm giving you. Um, and the other way is we have been implementing a just digital marketing funnel uh, using meta ads. 
um, and we're tinkering with it today. That's where a lot of our users have come from. Um, and we're just figuring out the messaging that connects the best. How much did you spend over the past 30 days on meta ads? Um, about two grand. Okay. Where do you get that money from? You're just testing with your own money or you got an angel or what? So we raised $120,000 so far, um, okay. 100 from a VC um, and 20 from a pair of angels. Actually, when was that? This year? Um, the 100 was a year and a half ago and the 20 was the last six, six months ago, maybe. Yeah, okay. Give or take. And I guess the hundred you raised last year, you know, most folks are selling, you know, 20% in a pre-seed round. Were you sort of in that same range? Um, no, um, we, we did that on a seven mil uh, valuation cap. Ah, okay. Um, so it, of course it's, you know, it's a, it's a safe. So it, the exact equity hasn't been determined yet, but it. Percent, 1, 1.5%. The 50K you got from business school friends this year, did you let them sit on the same terms as the angel that wrote that $100,000 check last year? Um, no, the terms changed a bit because it had been uh, a year and a half at that point. And just to clarify, it was, it was 20K. Um, 20K. So what did you oh, yeah, have the, to the, do the, to, yeah. you increase the valuation cap a little bit or what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah. Well, that's a good way to do it, all right? If you're gonna raise money, make sure you're raising a dollar on a billion dollar cap. That's a good way to mitigate dilution, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Um, okay. So that's, so you're using that money to go to, towards testing. What about a team today? How many folks are full time? Um, four. Okay. It's myself, my co-founder, um, who are not paid. Um, we're roughing it out and I just moved to San Francisco. So that is tough, uh, to be living here without a salary. Um, and then we have two, uh, developers. Um, yeah. Okay. They're, they're on contracts, but they're working full-time hours. Yeah. Yeah. How did you, yeah. it's always a tough conversation with a co-founder, right? The, the big equity conversation, right? So do you guys just say, screw it, we're going 50, 50, or do you really debate this out? Um, we discussed it, but we both were very happy with 50, 50. We've worked together before. He was actually the head of engineering at Thriver Technologies. Um, while I was head of product there at, the, at that time. And, um, we're actually now bringing on our head of marketing from Thriver as well, who's joining, but he's joining part-time. So I didn't include him in yep. the four uh, I was talking about before. Very cool. Very cool. So what's the next big, I mean, is the plan here going to be go get a million tasks being sent out per week and then launch a $5 a month paywall? Or are you going to try and maybe go enterprise early and get a paywall going quick? It's the former. Yeah, we're, we're really focused on growth. Um, we are, yeah, we're confident that we can make this into a, a very valuable business people are willing to pay for. We just don't want to get distracted from making the product really sticky and really valuable to our mm -hmm. users. Mm -hmm. Very good. That all makes sense. Um, did you do, talk to me about um, some of the things you learned at Thriver in terms of software products that you used? And you said, I want to make sure when I launch my own software company, I don't make those mistakes. So are you talking about product development or? Any actually any takeaways? I mean, you you were sold a lot of SaaS products in your roles at Thriver. I'm sure there are things you liked and disliked about different vendors. Oh, I see. In terms of which software we procured for Thriver, is just in just in general, you you can learn about how to build a great software company because you were the buyer of software companies at Thriver. So I'm just saying, yeah. based off your own experience, what did you learn about what you want to do when you build your own company versus what you want to avoid? I mean, I certainly loved being able to use products before. Um, having to make commitments to it. Um, you know, that's, uh, it's not like the most insightful response. And that's certainly not surprising to anybody. But, you know, it, the, the product led growth um, is um, just really appealing to me as a consumer. And of course, it's very appealing to the customer uh, to the vendor as well, because they don't have to deal with having salespeople uh, on salary, etc. Um, and uh, I just, I guess the big takeaway for me was I loved it as a vendor as a as a customer, sorry, because it meant I didn't have to also deal with salespeople. I could just quickly get onboarded and use the product um, and then see if it worked for me and then mm -hmm. make a decision and move on. Versus there were some products where I, I was, you know, working with a few different potential vendors to figure out which one we wanted. And I would have to do three, four or five different demos with three, four or five different salespeople and just book up my week with uh, product demos and make a decision. And that just took so much time. Um, and if there was one that offered self-serve that I was able to use and it actually worked, I think I always went with that one. Um, so yeah, I'm trying talk, to emulate that for sure. 
Talk to me about sort of distribution arbitrage and the Slack app, app exchange. You know, one of the big hits that Slack gets is that there is no methodology for ranking apps in sort of a democratic way. In other words, there's no reviews sort from high review to low. It just is sort of, it feels almost random at times or who's buddy, buddy, most buddy, buddy with the Slack app crew. Uh, how do you optimize the chaser listing to get more installs from Slack app directory? I hope one of your viewers can answer that question and email me the answer to it um, because I am not sure. I've wondered that uh, quite a lot. I regret that there aren't reviews. I wish that there was or ratings rather. And, well, both, I suppose. Um, but my understanding is they watch how well, how consistently people engage with your platform, what your retention is like. They're able to, you know, see retention from a different lens, but just usage and who uninstalls it. Um, which is, you know, churn. So the better your metrics looked from them, from their end, sorry, would indicate where you uh, end up. That's as far as I can, you know, guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it's just hard, right? Because if someone wants to discover Chaser through that, like either you have to work really hard to get direct traffic to the link you gave us, right, with meta ads, or you get free yep. organic exposure in the app directory because you have so many installs. The problem is when I click on categories and I go to productivity and then I sort by popularity, which is the default sorting, yep. you know, it's Drive, Google Calendar, Trello, blah, 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 Zapier. Totally. These are hard for you to like beat as a startup. And so it's like, what's the arbitrage? Like, do you go partner with the Trello app exchange instead? Because there's less competition, for example. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a tough question to answer. Um, we're, we're trying to figure that out every day. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What's your bet? I mean, do you have a thesis here yet? Or no, you're still really truly are still developing it. I mean, our thesis today is we're trying to get as many people as we can to use it. We're trying to make it as good as possible. And we hope that through these results, we're going to get higher on the list. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the apps that are in there, you know, you, you say Trello, for example, or Drive, like their Slack app, it's that it's great. And I, you know, I, I use the drive Slack app personally. Um, it's not their like core focus. It's not like Trello's actual like interface. It's their interface is mostly on the website, but the, the app is just pinging a channel every time somebody moves something. I think we can provide way more value in that we can, you can assign things. Well, to I don't disagree with that. Slack. I don't disagree yeah. with any of that. I, I agree with all of that. What I'm saying is like, if nobody knows about you because you can't arbitrage the top 15 spots in the, in the app exchange, then it doesn't matter. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Totally. What I think though, is we can beat Trello in the app store. Um, and that's because, you know, I've used the Trello app. It, it isn't sticky. It doesn't, it's just pinging a channel whenever somebody, um, you know, put, moves a, a, a card across a, the Trello board. Mm -hmm. um, it, it only, it only really, stayed on my, uh, in my experience, we only really used it for a few weeks and I realized this is just kind of bugging us um, and then turned it off. It's not something you're engaging with all the time. With Chaser, our users engage with us every single day. Um, and I hope that that's something Slack is able to pick up on and will realize, oh, wow, this is adding way more value and we'll catch their eye at some point and can get featured. Maybe they can manually put a sign on the list. Don't really know how they make those decisions, but one way, one way or another, I hope that we can prove to Slack that we're adding way more value than these just little extensions of other products versus us being you know, a very, very functional product that lives fully within Slack. I mean, look, it's the unwritten language, right? Trello promotes the Slack app inside of Trello.com and drives, you know, the ecosystem exchange. And so I think it's, I don't know, I just think I've never seen a startup be able to sort of crack this list. You know, you're coming from a purely a product purity perspective. And usually that is just sort of a it sounds really great, but in terms of operationalizing, it's really, really difficult. I'm certainly rooting for you. I hope it happens. I just haven't seen it work in the past. That's fair. If we have to get our traffic uh, off of the directory through our own means, through our own, you know, guerrilla marketing, through the ads, et cetera, then we'll have to do it. Yeah. Uh, if we can get the free traffic from Slack app directory, that's a bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's very expensive, right? If you have to keep paying meta ads, right, to get the insult, it's very expensive. But I think if you, obviously, if totally. you can use creativity to win, you always want to do that instead of money. 100%. All right, Josh, this is, this is exciting. I, can't, I hope, can't wait to talk to you in a year and see where you guys grow. But in the meantime, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book? Um, the shoe, shoe Dog. Just a lot no, of fun. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, is there a CEO that I'm following? I mean, I, I hate to say Elon Musk, but it is him. And I wish that I spent less time 
following all of his antics because I don't Num- know what he's doing, but I hate what he's doing on the side. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a platform? Um, segment. This really saved me a lot of time. It, not in my current job, but in previous jobs. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, seven and a half. Okay, that's good. In situation, married, single kids? Yeah. Um, I am living with my girlfriend. That's great. Okay, no kiddos. And how old are you? 31. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. I wish that I knew how much fun tech is because in my, when I was 20, I was still focused on medical school. <laughs> Guys, there you have it. Uh, try.chaseforme.com helps you send out to-dos on Slack. Uh, they've got 100 companies signed up so far, sending to-do lists again out to their audience. He's measuring retention over the past 16 weeks, coming in at 43%, using some of his favorite tools like Segment and Mixpanel. The question is now, can they grow that user base from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to more? Funding the company with $100,000 pre-seed round at a $7 million cap last year, then did a uh, $20,000 round this year at a slightly higher cap to buy some extra runway for full-time today. Two co-founders. We'll see what they do next. Josh, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you so much. This was a blast. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.